It's 10 o'clock, Chairman. I'm just going to wait for the confirmation when the live stream started, and I will just let you know when that. Oh, yes, the live stream has started, Chairman. Good morning. Welcome to this virtual meeting of the Miscellaneous Licensing Committee. Before consideration of today's business, I will outline the protocols for the meeting. If a member experiences a technical issue, we will adjourn for a short period to try to re-establish their connection. The meeting is being live streamed to the public via Microsoft Teams and is also being recorded. As the chairman calls members to speak, <clears throat> she will remind you to switch on your microphone. If for some reason you cannot be heard, the democratic officer will advise you. We do have public participation today and the applicant will be joining the hearing by telephone. Where a member has declared a non-registrable interest, a disclosable interest, a disclosable pecuniary interest or an interest by virtue of any trade union membership in a matter, they must leave the virtual meeting. Their departure will be confirmed and they will be invited to rejoin the meeting at the appropriate time. Should the press and public be excluded from the meeting, members will be required in turn to confirm and declare that there are no other persons present who are not entitled to either hear or see consideration of the matter. To confirm the procedure for today's meeting is that committee members who wish to speak on an item should type X in the chat box. Before we start the meeting, I will ask the committee members to confirm they are present and their electoral division. Councillor Biscoe. Uh, Bert Bisco, uh, I represent the Boscowan Division in Truro. Councillor Brown. Uh, good morning. Um, Malcolm Brown, Councillor for St. Austell Bethel. Councillor Dorr. Uh, Councillor Dorr for the Lionel Division, and I'm alone. Councillor Eakin Smith. Good morning, David Eakin Smith, Councillor for Eleven. Councillor Bull. Uh, good morning, um, Jackie Bull, Councillor for St Austell Poltaire. Councillor Flashman. Jim Flashman, Kelly Bray, St Dominic and St Millian. Councillor Hayward. Good morning, <coughs> Councillor Hayward, Councillor for St Austell Gover Division and ch Chair of this meeting today. Councillor Lennox Boyd. Good morning, I'm Sheila Lennox Boyd, representing Saltash Noah. Councillor Martin. Good morning, John Martin, Councillor for Helston South. Councillor Mould. Good morning, Carol Mould, Cornwall Councillor for St Member and St Indelian Division. Councillor Pascoe. Good morning, Councillor Pascoe, Councillor for Liscard West and Dog Balls. And Councillor Thomas. Good morning, Councillor John Thomas, Electoral Divisional Member for Lanner and Stithians, and I'm alone. Thank you. Um, I can also confirm we have the following officers present. We have Angie McGinn, Licensing Team Manager, Claire Green, Licensing Officer, Mark Andrews, Senior Lawyer, and myself, Rowena Brebner, Democratic Officer. Do you want to go to the agenda items now, Chair? Yes, thank, thank you, Rowena. Uh, right. So, um, good morning, everybody. Um, can we go straight to the apologies for absence, please? We have apologies from Councillor Foote and we have Councillor Bull substituting for him. Thank you. Um, any declarations of interest? None. Have you received any, Rowena? I haven't. Oh. No, I haven't. OK, um, we go to the minutes of the meeting held on the 5th of February 2021. Pages one to three in your uh, papers. Um, can I, if you, there are no issues of any accuracy, can I have a proposer and seconder that we accept those minutes, please? I'll move them, Chairman. I'll second, Chairman. Chairman. Sorry, who was the other one? Jim. Oh, hello. Yes, OK. Councillor Flashman, second. And all those in favour? Um, I'll do a roll, we... Chairman. I'll, I'll... All right, OK. And Councillor Biscoe? Four. Councillor Brown? Four. Councillor Dorr? Um, I never received the minutes of the last meeting or the agenda today, so I can't comment. OK, Councillor Eakin-Smith. Four. Councillor Bull. Uh, abstain only because I wasn't there. OK, Councillor Flashman. Four. Councillor Hayward. Abstain, I wasn't there. Councillor Lennox Boyd. Four. Councillor Martin. Four. Councillor Mould. Four. Councillor Pascoe. Four. Councillor Thomas. Four. Thank you. That's carried, Chairman. The minutes have been approved. Thank you. 
So I'm hoping that everybody has had the extra agenda, additional agenda item 3.1. Um, that's approval of revised fees for relevant protected sites. Is I, I'm taking silence that you've all got that. Mm -hmm. um, who would like? Is it um, Angie? You're proposing this one, are you? That's right. Yeah, just presenting this one. Sorry, off you yes, go. Present, yeah, thank you. Um, the, the purpose of the report I'm presenting today is to ask the committee to recommend to council that it implements the proposed increase in fees for residential park home sites. These are referred to as relevant protected sites in, in the documents, that's the legal term, um, together with implementation of, of a new fee for the application um, for anyone that wants to be included on the fit and proper person register. Um, all these fees um, proposed with effect from the 1st of April. Um, and also that council agree to update the fees policy document. So if they agree the fees, then obviously the document that's attached to the report will, will need updating for when, when council approve. Um, in terms of delegation for fee setting, um, generally council delegates down to strategic directors. And in this regard, the 2% increase requested by them has been applied um, to the fees and charges that are being proposed. However, in doing so, we have had regard to um, the guidance from central government on fee setting, particularly in relation to setting fees to only achieve cost recovery and not making any surplus. So that 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 is um, compliant. Um, there was um, a proposed increase in fees last year, but due to the pandemic and the absence of meetings at the time, the last year's increase wasn't brought to you to propose to council, but those have been incorporated into um, the proposal that you're looking at today. Um, the supplementary agenda pack has details of the current fees together with, with the proposed fees for last year and this year, and that starts on the bottom of page four, so you, you can see the comparison. Um, I mean, in, in effect, the fees have been agreed, I suppose, under delegated authority. However, we can only charge the fees legally if they are set out in a policy document which is agreed and published in advance of the implementation date. The policy document can only be amended by council, so it's usual practice to bring the um, fees recommendations to you um, as a committee and ask that you recommend to council that it agrees those fees and updates the document annually. Um, any recommendation from committee today, um, I'm hoping we'll go to the next um, council meeting, which I believe is the last meeting before the election. Um, so if the council doesn't set those fees at that meeting, then any increase in the fees will be delayed until later on in the year when, when the new council meets to, to determine any recommendation from yourselves if, if it's not done at that next meeting. Um, this will also mean a delay in, in setting the new fee for the application for the fit and proper person test. We're currently drawing up the procedures for that new process at the moment. That will start later this year. Um, I mean, generally, that, that's all I have to say. I'm happy to answer any questions from members. Um, you know, I could I talk quite a bit about it, but it's easier just to perhaps deal with the, those questions and see if um, you're happy to make that proposal to council. OK, thanks, Angie. Um, right, Councillor Bisco. Uh, Chairman, I've, I've got a I've got a couple of questions, if I may, yeah. uh, which don't actually relate directly to the proposed increase. The first one, uh, which I think probably uh, is for Mark, is is on page three of the report. There's a, the subsection of whatever law it is is set out, and it refers at subsection eight to um, an exemption for a. a a caravan which is for a person employed by the occupier but who does not occupy the caravan sorry uh, there was one about somebody who's working for you mm -hmm. i can't quite see where it is now i read it earlier on this morning um anyway the point being uh sorry i beg your pardon um there is an exemption from 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 a need for a license if somebody is working for the owner or it's the owner living in it um, I think that's right. I just wanted to understand if 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 I can, whether that applies to migrant workers and whether on a on a farm and whether we could actually end up with quite large amounts of caravans with people working in them as a result of that that piece of the law. That was the first question. Um, I'll try and find the reference in there. The second question is is that I have no problem with agreeing to the increases. However, I, I'm afraid I don't quite understand the escalator um, in the in the fees that we in the in the fee structure that we have. So uh, going on the current prices, we have um, 
one to 50 pitches is 280, 51 to 100 is 310, 101 to 150 is 525, and 151 to 200 plus is 840. Well, that seems to be going up in in leaps, which I, I don't quite understand the logic behind it. Um, because it's uh, in fact, the first one, the one between the, the gap between the 310 and 280 is 30 quid. The gap between 101 and 150 is 215. And the gap for 151 to 200 is 441 pounds. And that's it. They seem for, for increments of 50 caravans each, that seems to be sort of, a, it, I don't follow the logic of it how we actually price it out like that. So I'm looking at page nine and the application fees there. That's the bit that I've looked at. So I, I just wonder if somebody could explain that logic, but I'm happy to move the, the increases, Chairman. But I'd just like to understand the logic behind the way in which we grade the prices against the number of pitches that we're actually in, um, licensing. And also think about migrant workers. <coughs> I, think I don't know if Mark would like me to jump in there. <laughs> I think that's a good idea. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think the, the the first one, there are exemptions in the legislation and it is, um, some of it is, um, there's, there's several different um, exemptions. I think that there is something like you say about, you know, em employees working. Um, I think there is something about, um, you know, I, 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 I am yeah. aware that there's something you know, like when the people have got, um, I mean, I'll give an example, if you've got the daffodil pickers and then you've got some, you know, workers living on the caravan. Yeah. That that is exempt, and that's in the law, and that you know, there's there's that is a, a straightforward exemption in the law, so that that mm. is there, and you know, that it is used. Um, with with the fee structure, um, I know when when we when we charge for the annual fees, we have to give a statement as well, and we have kind of worked that out, and we've we've kind of the the logic more was the bigger the site, the longer it takes to inspect, um, but then there were it was kind of added in. There's all the kind of on costs, like you know, if you if you say the office-based staff, if we're dealing with inquiries and freedom of information requests, all of that we've got to kind of factor in. So um, there was some logic behind it, um, um, and it's probably very difficult to explain now with that. But I, you know, I can make sure that we we we, we look at that if it, it looks like there's an anomaly. Um, I know, you know, it was sort of back in when we first did it, that there was a structure around it, yeah. it increase year on year, and it might be the year on year increase that's that, that's kind of. Um, expanded, you know, the, the issue, if you see what I mean. I think, uh, if I may, Chairman, I, I think that, that if if we were ever challenged on that fee structure, I think, it, I mean, I mean, I'm sure that Angie is right and that there is a logic behind it. And, you know, I, I could see that. But if we were ever challenged on it, I think, um, you know, being able to express what our logic is, yeah. it, is really important. I mean, for instance, there is one other small point which I was going to, which I wasn't going to raise, but I will now. Now I'm here, uh, and that is, is I don't quite understand why the difference between uh, sending a letter and sending an email should be ten pounds. So we charge twenty pounds for a, a replacement license, and ten pounds if we email it. <laughs> and I, I know, and, yeah. yeah. Well, it was it was I've got more. Cost was the difference on that because you did have the. Just, I've got Mark wanting to come in a minute, and I think if he's Mark, yeah, please. Yeah, just on the um, hello, it's Mark from Legal here. Just on the point, I think Angie probably covered it anyway. But the the legislation refers to the um, only or main residents as well. So um, whether that would mean that flower people <laughs> wouldn't wouldn't be included. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, if that's a specific query, I'm, I can certainly look into it. Um, in more detail, but um, yeah, I think Angie answered it, but I just wanted to come yeah. in and that it's the only or main residence is referred to in the legislation. Thank it just you. seems to me that there are times when the amount of people who are on sites like that uh, and, and given, you know, their conditions and their situation and their vulnerability and probably their unfamiliarity with their rights in this country, that they're probably most at risk of the very things that we regulate sites in order to prevent. Yeah, I think I think with um, I mean I'm, I'm not that knowledgeable about flower pickers and and farm workers, but often they will be provided with accommodation by the um, employer, uh, mm. so they wouldn't necessarily end up on a 
on a site as such. So no, no, no. But my point is, is that the accommodation that they, the employer provides can actually end up being a site by dint of the number of, of, of units there are there and the conditions that apply. OK, okay. That's my right. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bisco. Um, has anybody else got any further questions for Angie? Um, Councillor Bisco, did you say that you wanted to recommend? What was your recommendation? My Sorry, recommendation is, is that I propose that we approve the increases in price for the next financial year. And I'll second that if I may. Thanks, Jim. Yeah, thanks, Councillor. Sorry, um, to, it's Mark, Mark again. Sorry to interrupt yeah. you. Uh, do you want me to give you some wording? That, that Please, covers I've got the... something here. Can I run it by you, Mark? It was just that I was going to say that it's what we've got recommended here that the yeah. council adopt and implement. Is that what you were going to do? Effectively, yeah. So yeah, I'll just tweak, I'll tweak let you it do slightly, it tweak it slightly just to make yeah. it a, a sort of formal amendment. So, uh, and I don't know if 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 it if it in any way is not what Angie is suggesting, then please, if Angie <laughs> could just step in, but or, or if it's not what members want, obviously that's the most important thing. But um, so that following consideration of the report, it'd be recommended to council that council imposed the proposed increases in fees for relevant protected sites, together with the new fee for an application for the fit and proper person register as set out in the report with effect from 1st of April 2021, and that the fees policy for relevant protected sites document be updated accordingly and approved. Uh, so it's the recommendation to council on that basis. Are you OK with that, Councillor Bisco? The basis for both as I could make it, so that's fine by me. Uh, 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 the uh, thing for me, Chairman, is I would like to request um, that at some point, some some paper, some codification is prepared that actually explains the logic of the grading okay. of the of the fee structure. Yeah, I'm sure Angie can work that one out. Yeah. Um, Councillor Flashman, are you OK with that proposal as well? Did you seconded yeah. it? Um, Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. So we have that proposal in front of us. It's been proposed by Councillor Bisco, seconded by Councillor Flashman. And Rowena, do you want to run through the roll call, please? I will. When I call your name, please indicate if you are for, against or abstaining. Councillor Bisco. For. Councillor Brown. For. Councillor Daw. For. Councillor Eakin Smith. For. Councillor Bull. For. Councillor Flashman. For. Councillor Hayward. For. Councillor Lennox Boyd. For. Councillor Martin. For. Councillor Mould. For. Councillor Pasco. For. Councillor Thomas. For. Thank you. That has been unanimously approved, Chairman. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Angie. Right. Okay. So now we need to go to. I've got no other business in this section. So we'll go to the exclusion of the press and public. Can I have a proposal and seconder for that, please? I'll propose, Jim. I'll Thank second. You. Ms. Carroll, I'll second, Madam Thank Chair. Thank you. So it's proposed by Councillor Eckin Smythe, um, seconded by Councillor Mould, that we, the committee is asked to consider a res the resolution that the press and public be excluded from the meeting for the business specified in the following items on the ground that there is likely to be a disclosure to the public of exempt information of the following descriptions, information relating to an individual. So Rowena, do you want to do a roll call again? I will, Chairman. Please indicate if you are for, against or abstaining. Councillor Bisco? Uh, for. Councillor Brown? For. Councillor Daw? For. Councillor Daw? For. Councillor Eakin Smith? For. Okay, thank you. Councillor Eakin Smith? For. Councillor Bull. For. Councillor Flashman. For. Councillor Hayward. For. Councillor Lennox Boyd. For. Councillor Martin. For. Councillor Mould. For. Councillor Pasco. For. Councillor Thomas. For. Thank you. I'll just wait, Chairman, to have confirmation when we have the live stream stopped. Um, and I'll, if you just pause for a moment while I get confirmation. Thank you. Yes. 